then, Milan had been the moral and economic heart of the country since 1920, hosting the Campionaria Trade Fair, when the Salone del Mobile opened on the 24th of September 1961. The Salone del Mobile has just opened in Milan, a trade fair showcasing absolutely everything it takes to make a home beautiful and comfortable. The fact that the Honorable Colombo, Minister of Industry, has opened the event shows just how important this aspect of Italian industry is. We couldn't get enough of all the exhibits, and we particularly liked the soft and highly sprung goods. Naturally, I am alluding to the mattresses, those wonderful platforms for our dreams. Soft, soft, all is soft. A piece of post-war Italian industrial history that already contained all the elements of what was to become the world of Italian furnishing, recognized and increasingly coveted all over the world. The pioneers were a group of furniture makers, members of the professional body Federlegno, keen to find a new way to export their products. 328 exhibitors ranged over 11,000 square meters at first, Compared with the present day, these figures elicit smiles and pause for reflection. 2,500 attendees at the latest editions ranged over almost 230,000 square meters. 12,000 curious visitors in 1961, rising to more than 300,000, the so-called Salone people, gathered from all four corners of the earth, no less than 160 countries dizzying growth that has made the Salone del Mobile the undisputed showcase for the furnishing world. Myriad small and tiny businesses, flanked by a body of talented artisans, heirs to a very noble manufacturing tradition going back over a hundred years, capable of producing a wide range of products, styles and materials. That's what the industry was like in those days. A strong system, but one as yet unaware of its own possibilities. A system that was already culturally affirmed, that had consigned rationalism to the history books with quality products and important architect designers. This brought it home to the Italian entrepreneurs that, in order to do business, faced with the spectre of saturation of internal demand following post-war reconstruction, as well as the hoped-for advent of a modern Italian production, as the architect Gioponti put it, the only way out was export. But the small Italian producers couldn't tackle this alone. My father was responsible for getting the board of Fedelegno together and asking it if it wouldn't be a good idea to talk to the Milan Fair organizers about putting together a specialist exhibition for furniture makers. And so my father, together with Mr. De Bacis, went off to the trade fair. And when my father put it to him, Franchi said, you're mad. If you try and put on an exhibition all on your own, no one will come. You must come to the big fair, the Campionaria trade fair in April. Lots of furniture makers come. Spread out. I'll give you all the space you need, special prices. But don't even think of putting on an exhibition that doesn't have a chance of success. So my father took this on board, but he was firmly convinced that actually it made sense. So when they got home, they said, the trade fair didn't take us seriously, but we don't care. We're cracking on with it. And that's how the Salone started. So the request made by that group of furniture manufacturers turned out to be more than far-sighted. The Salone del Mobile has told the story of Italy during the economic boom of the 60s, testament to the enthusiasm and desire for renewal. Italian design and its masters. It was here that the iconic Made in Italy pieces were exhibited for the first time. 
It wasn't long before the Salone del Mobile became the global benchmark. A specialist yet heterogeneous fair, symbol of an entire method of working, an industrial tool and an extraordinary promotional vehicle. In 1967, the Salone went international and became increasingly specialized. This led to Euro Cucina and Euro Luce, the biennial kitchen and lighting exhibitions in 1974 and 1976, forums where ideas, design, technology and innovation came together. In 1982, EMU, now Workplaces 3.0, Salone Ufficio, and dedicated to the workplace, was launched, followed in 1989 by the International Furnishing Accessories Exhibition, rounding off the compendium of domestic furnishing. In 1998, it was the turn of Salone Satellite, the acknowledged launchpad for young designers and a point of reference for companies on the lookout for geniuses of the future. Finally, in 2006, the biennial International Bathroom Furniture Exhibition came into being, held in tandem with Euro Cucina, generating full synergy in terms of product research and development. That was how the Salone del Mobile came to embrace the entire home furnishing system, representing all types of domestic furnishing and all possible styles, from classic to design to modern and trendsetting. The Salone del Mobile is the biggest showcase there is for design and we're expecting to reaffirm our leadership as we do every year. As always at Ero Luce, we will see the very best of Italian manufacturing and know-how, which is perhaps the most important thing. Bathroom manufacturers have put their money on the Salone del Mobile because it has been and still is, and let me say will unquestionably continue to be the best platform for driving up our export sales. Salone Ufficio undoubtedly does a huge amount to help firms find their way out of this crisis. The range of products is more diversified than ever, and it provides an objective and extremely cross-cutting picture of what the sector has to offer. Furnishing pieces have kept pace with the evolving domestic and working environments. Kitchens are increasingly becoming domestic social hubs, spaces poised to open up and show off their materials, colours and designs. Their functional spaces tend to expand and magnify and overflow into and meld with those of the living room. Bathrooms are shedding their utilitarian chrysalis and becoming spaces devoted to wellness and relaxation. Style trends are changing with them, with a preference for strong colours and graphic patterns for ceramic and sanitary surfaces. Workplaces are developing solutions in line with new modes of working and new design needs for living the workspace on an increasingly human scale, freer and more dynamic. Cross-pollination, innovation, research Living styles drive and reflect lifestyles. The Salone del Mobile in Milan really is the leading fair on the entire terrestrial globe. So right now Milan is the centre of the world. It lasts a week, but luckily it lasts all year for the company. In this way, the Salone del Mobile continues to foster new styles of living, revolutionary technologies and materials. It is also an ambassador for the identity of Italian excellence, the fusion of the artisan tradition, technology, innovation and creativity, exemplifying style and beauty and their powerful connection with the land. It is this know-how that makes Italy and its globally acknowledged Made in Italy products unique. Italian design is very important because it's the father of the design. Uh, Italy invent the design. 
like a real culture, like a real political action, and that makes a big difference. That's why you have the designer, the most famous designer of the world uh, in Italy, but you have also the what we call the editor. Since September 1961, the Salone del Mobile has grown along with and thanks to its city, which had, as it still has today, a wealth of consolidated artisan tradition behind it. Milan thus began to evolve into the capital of furniture and furnishing, a jewel in the crown of international design. It's the only event, actually I think it's the event, that shows off what Milan aspires to be the only time Milan truly becomes exactly the place we want it to be. Milan's the capital of creativity and design. Moreover, it's the hub of Europe. Northern Europe and Southern Mediterranean Europe included. This new Milan built a new home for the Salone del Mobile in 2006, in Massimiliano Fuxas's technologically cutting-edge raw fairgrounds a functional and welcoming showground, clearly and rationally laid out. A space that enables the 2,500 exhibitors and 300,000 visitors to interact comfortably. I think this is a really international edition. Masses of people have come from many different countries. There are some great companies and this isn't the first time we've come. Well, I think the Salone Satellite is really interesting. There are lots of young people and the level of creativity really makes it stand out. The consistently high quality of the furnishing is a driving force for the city of Milan and the evolution of the city and all the parallel events are fundamental. It is its broad range of goods and their exceptional quality, its effective and global communications network encompassing Paris, London, Shanghai, Munich, New York and Moscow. Its countless awards and recognitions, including the three Compasso d'Oro Awards. Its philosophy of bringing business and culture together through hugely interesting events devoted to design, architecture and art, both at the fairgrounds and in prestigious city locations, from the Triennale to Palazzo Reale, that make the Salone del Mobile and Milan such a shining beacon on the international stage. Why should companies come to the Salone del Mobile in Milan? Because of its internationalization strategy. It's a very clear signal of what the Salone del Mobile has achieved over these 54 years of growth. And it enables companies to present their entire range of products to visitors from 180 different countries. A totally winning formula for all those whose lives revolve around the world of design and the global art of living. <laughs>